Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Sillyville edition. Put on your seatbelts. This is going to be a crazy ride. First up, UC Berkeley is ending the SETI at Home project after 21 years. If you are unaware of what the SETI project was, uh, the SETI project is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So the idea here is that they would collect all of this stuff and then filter it down through a mesh network, basically turning everybody's computer who wanted to participate into a giant supercomputer to process data. We shut it down because my lizard alien, uh, reptilian alien race was really getting concerned that they were getting close to our home base and we came down and cut a deal with UC Berkeley and they're done. They're done. That's it. Uh, we said no more SETI. They got really close. They actually intercepted a couple of signals in between us, um, our home planet, the mothership, and the new Beetlejuice colony. We got, put an end to it. We actually blocked all those computers out. And then us reptile people, we came in and, sh nope, done. So SETI is done. SETI at home is done. Um, so after, uh, after 21 years, so here's uh, some information on it. Speaking of uh, second time, I mentioned Leverage again this week. There's actually a SETI episode on Leverage where they uh, created a uh, fake alien objection. Very good if you didn't watch that show. Uh, really killer lemonade? No, that's neat. Cool. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but anyway, um, next one. Oh, Lord, another another act. I had to put this one in Sillyville because these these politicians, after after three acts, the third act this 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 week, um, news cycle, it's just going into Sillyville because these people lose their ever-loving mind. Of course, this one also has to have a pithy title. This one is called the Kids Act. Uh, what's the uh, what's the abbreviation for? Um, it does have a pithy title. Uh, where is the pithy title? I forget the pithy title. It's not listed right here. Uh, the Kids Internet Act, the Safety... Oh, is it the Safety Act? I don't remember. I don't remember. Let's uh, look at the bill. Okay. Keep Children Safe Act. Okay, that's it. It's the Kids Internet Design and Safety Act. That's it. The Kids Act. Get it? <laughs> Kids Internet Design and Safety Act. The Kids Act. Oh, it's right here. Duh. I just missed it. I'm just blind. All right, so uh, this act here is going to make sure that content directed towards children is monitored in different ways. Once again, we already have laws about this. Let's just enforce the laws that we have rather than give everybody a chance and 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 a chance. They're maliciously violating the law. Act on the law that we have. We don't need to keep creating new laws to do the same stuff. So, and this one, just like the Earn It Act, is going to be very subjective. So in this case, a child is defined as anyone under 16. I think it used to be under 13. Now it's under 16. So we added three years. So that is, and that ends the solid, easily definable part of this, of this law. Directed to children gets a broad definition, anything targeted to users. It's targeted by its subject matter, its visual content, the use of animated characters or child-oriented activities or for children or related incentives, music or other audio content, because clearly only children listen to music. Uh, the age of models used, the presence of child celebrities or celebrities who appeal to children, the language used, and advertising, quote, used on or used to advertise the content. Very, very clear cut, clean. We understand exactly what it means. Oh, wait, never mind. We don't know anything about this. But we already have laws about this. It's called COPA. Why don't you guys just enforce COPA and put some pressure on the tech companies to say you can't override COPA this easily? And maybe, just maybe, this will actually um, not be a needed thing. But the idea here is that they're going to try and protect all of the children online. So, you know, <sighs> whatever, whatever. The smartphone hating engineer created a mobile device with a rotary dialer. Nice. Now, looking at this and just understanding how modern technology works, I guarantee you this is not a true rotary dial. So the way a rotary phone worked completely different than the way a touch tone phone does. And the way the touch tone phone would work is a sequence, key sequence, 
works differently than a rotary, which uses a series of dots, kind of like Morse code. So under the dial, there is a series of uh, a series of connections. And as the dial runs around, it'll hit all of these guys and ping that. So a one ping is one, two pings is two, three pings is three, all the way on up to 10, uh, where the zero would be 10 pings. So you dial a zero, go, that's what it's doing. It's pinging an internal circuit 10 times. And then based on the ping pattern, that's the number that would dial. Probably this thing is just doing that and then just feeding the data into a touchtone phone. That's my guess. Uh, but anyway, it is totally epically cool, nevertheless. I might think about wanting to get me one. It almost looks like it might be built on a Raspberry Pi well, or some other board here. So here we have our basic Wi-Fi antenna with our SIM. We have a little rotary guy here. We got a speaker, maybe a few other things. And so, yeah, there we are. Wireless electronics, digital portable telephone. There you go. Uh, so if you wanted to oh, look at this bad boy, nice. Now from your car, you can place receive calls from any place in the world with General Electric simultaneous duplex mobile telephone. Look at that rotary dial. Uh, was that really a thing back in the day? I, I have no recollection of one such device. Um, I do remember the original phones. My mother's like, oh Lord, like my mother one day, it's, it's like a bad icy day because, you know, global warming hadn't yet kicked in, despite they've been telling us for years, global warming coming, you know. Um, so it's like my mother just gets her first phone and, and like she leaves for work and then, and then like, I'm going to be leaving soon. And yeah, I know how to drive in the snow because yeah, I grew up in the Northeast. So like about five minutes after she's like, the roads are really icy. I'm going sideways. I'm like, Hey mother, then hang up the phone and put two hands on the steering wheel. <laughs> my lands. Uh, all right, so um, this little tyke here, I don't think this is the real kid. He looks clearly younger than 11. But a parents allow 11-year-old to drive a car because they were sick of him playing GTA all day. You know, I have a couple things to mention about this. First and foremost, this is one of these things that's like, okay, If your 11 year old is playing GTA, be a better parent. That's not a kid for a, a video game for children. You want to play GTA as a, may, maybe as a, a late teenager, adult, whatever, have at it. Do, do these people know what the content of GTA is? I don't want this 11 year old to be growing up with parents who do not recognize the dangers of this type of game. And yes, video games do impact us. Um, there is actually an ample amount of research and studies about this. I know you can cherry pick your favorite study that doesn't, but I did spend a long time looking through 20 years of research history and there's a lot of research history about this. Um, and it's not like a clear cut, you'd play GTA, you're going to go kill people. That's not the case. Uh, there's a lot of little nuances to it. In fact, I wrote in detail in this about, about it in my book called I am not amused. Um, but we have an 11 year old is told to go drive the car because they were sick of him playing GTA. Um, be a better parent. Both of these options this 11 year old has are not good. GTA, no. Driving car, no. At least to play the kids playing GTA, at least for the time being, he's not out driving a car. So I'll go for the GTA over the kid driving a car out on the streets with the rest of us. So, of course, um, the parents have long fought a losing battle to stop their kids from playing video games for too long. But sometimes the carrot is more effective than the stick. It appears a set of parents in the UK, oh good, it wasn't in my country, subscribed to that thinking, having allowed their 11-year-old boy to drive their car, a way of stopping him from playing GTA all day, apparently. Okay, let me tell you something, guys. If you have an 11-year-old and he's calling the shots in your house, you got serious parenting problems. It's like... They fought the losing battle to stop their kids from playing video games for too long. Really? Let me tell you how to solve that. In case you're one of these parents, in, in case, if, this, if the parents of this child are watching, let me show you what you do. You take the device, you unplug everything from the back of it, and you go throw it and lock it in your car, or you throw it in the trash can, or you give it to a neighbor, or you sell it, or you do something else because this kid is clearly too obsessed with video games. I mean, really, really. So 
So anyway, apparently he was caught, busted, whatever else. They gave the parents a ticket. <clears throat> Good. Maybe they should evaluate his home. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lordy. All right, are we ready for our uh, chief story for today? This is a brand new video game. Run an America full of talking animals and a democratic socialism simulator. Point of personal privilege! Point of personal privilege! Did you guys watch that nonsense from the... American Democrat, what is it? The Democratic, the Democratic Socialists of America. You guys see that? It took them an entire day to vote on their rules because every five seconds, put a personal privilege, put a personal privilege. You guys are making too much noise. Why can't focus if there's too much noise? All right, put a personal privilege. We don't want anybody clapping. Don't clap. That could be distracting. Do jazz hands instead. Jazz hands, jazz hands. These are the people, some people want ruling our country for the love. I will be taking off from my spaceship and not coming back for any of y'all fools. But I will be watching from the moon because it's going to be hilarious watching you people do things. But anyway, let's just assume for a second that a democratic socialist gets into the presidency. This is a new video game that you can apparently play the new Pork Times. And you can simulate being the president in a democratic socialist country. The coolest thing of all... There's a Linux build for this game, people. The downside is it costs five bucks. So I didn't actually want to uh, buy it. I'm not completely sure that I really want to uh, support it. It seems to me more like a um, um, just a, a quick keyword make a lot of money stuff. But if you actually head on over, uh, pave the road to post-capitalistic society. The Democratic Socialism Simulator lets you play the first socialist president of the United States. Can you redistribute power and wealth while addressing the climate crisis? Enact racial uh, reforms, tax the rich, transform the economy, tackle the most pressing issues without alienating voters or bankrupting the government. But beware, the ruling class won't give up its power easily. Even your closest allies may turn on you. So there's like itch.io, there's Google Play, you can get for Windows, Linux, and Mac! Woohoo! We're moving up in the world, folks. It does cost um, five bucks, I think. Um, let's see, is it itch.io, I think, was the build for Linux? Yeah. So this is where, oh, it's two bucks. I thought it was five yesterday. Hmm, two bucks, I might do it, I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, you could actually uh, download this guy uh, install it, I guess, on your Linux build. I'd want to look into it a little bit more before I'd actually put it on my system. Um, but, um, yeah, definitely interesting. This reminds me of, there is another video game, and I forget the name of it now, but, uh, I actually downloaded it and installed it. I had to install it through Wine because it's like Windows only, but it was a game where you had to, you were a college student and you had to go around the campus looking for microaggressions. You literally had to go around the campus looking for microaggressions, calling people out on their microaggressions as you were going around on campus orientation day. You know, you had to pick an advisor. Ooh, that's a microaggression, you know. Oh, it's like, oh, my Lord. Um, very interesting stuff. Um, that one was a free download. I just can't remember the name of it now. I might be able to find it if I look it up. But um, anyway, uh, what's your thought? Are you going to play the Democratic Socialism Simulator? Uh, let me know if you are able to redistribute wealth without the country turning on you in the comments down below.